So Derek, it's almost the big day. Are you ready for this? I'm always ready, all right? I got my sweatpants on. I've got my adult human-sized bib ready. I am ready to demolish a turkey and a whole bunch of canned cranberry sauce. What about you? Yeah, man, uh, I was born ready. Always ready for the next holiday. Uh, I'm one of them kind of people that like Halloween's done and I jump right into the next holiday. So for those of you who are piecing things together after that intro, obviously we're talking about Easter. Easter is coming up, folks. Oh, uh, yeah. And we... <laughs> Not quite. We're talking about Thanksgiving, obviously. And Grimy, what specifically will we be talking about tonight? All right, so I won't lie, we struggled a little bit with this one, and we do hope that you find it at least a little bit entertaining for what it's worth. So tonight, I thought that it would be fun to name a couple of our favorite Thanksgiving things. So these things could be family traditions, a memorable float or a balloon in the parade, food item, show, movie, or holiday special, so on and so forth. So uh, that's what we're up to today. Yeah, I mean, I had suggested uh, to Grimey that maybe we cover our top five favorite family fights uh, from Thanksgiving <laughs> past, and he thought that that might be in poor taste. Um, I mean, maybe next year. I don't know. I, I, I still maybe we'll talk about it offline, but maybe next year. But we, it doesn't even have to be fist fights. Just like you know, total family blowouts. Like I know I've got at least six or seven. I could probably whittle down to a list of. Five. Oh yeah, I don't know, man. I, I think we would have to go with like with my family. It's like a top ten, top twenty. Uh, with my top family 20. alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's wow. there's been some occurrences. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say. It's the season for fighting and Black Friday shopping. Absolutely. I don't know who says that. I say that. That's my motto for the Thanksgiving season. I think. <laughs> It's a good motto. I, I'm, I'm down with that. Well, without any further ado, would you like to hop into it? Absolutely. Who wants to go first? Seeing as this is your uh, format, I'm going to let you take the reins on this one. All right. This is all just because of a sandwich. <laughs> a sandwich? Yeah. You see, my, my sister makes these amazing turkey sandwiches. Her secret is she puts a, an extra slice of gravy-soaked bread in the middle. I call it the moist maker. <laughs> anyway, I, I put my... Derek, how familiar are you with the show Friends? Unfortunately, incredibly familiar with the show. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've, I've got nothing against Friends, genuinely. I think it's all right. Uh, I might even like it even more had it not been on a complete and total repeat loop in my house for the past 25 years. And I, I don't even say that as an exaggeration. I think I might have mentioned this before here, maybe even over on Knife Dog. My sister is probably the biggest Friends fan going. She's always had the DVD sets. So even before Friends came to Netflix and became like a second wave cultural phenomenon like it did a couple years ago, it's just always been a constant in my house. Like, anytime she's around and has a free minute, Friends is on. So, long story short, very familiar. Very familiar. And I have a feeling I know where you're going with this. Oh, you just might. So, before I get into that, yeah, I'm also a pretty big fan. Uh, I used to have the D. I have the DVD still, but... um. They were in 24-7, then when they hit Netflix, it was on 24-7, and then it disappeared from Netflix and went to HBO Max, and it's we went on a little bit of a hiatus of Friends, but we're back on it. Uh, we just started watching it again recently with all the holidays coming up. It's an easy one to throw in and watch during the holidays, or any time really, but especially the holidays. They have all kinds of holiday episodes, and uh, I don't know, it just hits the spot for me. So, But yeah, as you were saying, for sure, you definitely know where I'm going with this. So Season 5, Episode 9, it's a post-Thanksgiving episode, and um, Ross takes his favorite sandwich to work, which is called uh, The Moist Maker. So you've, you've heard of this then, right? My sandwich! Yes, yes, classic. <laughs> 
<laughs> just a little familiar. Absolutely. So he takes the sandwich to work. He freaks out because someone else ate it or threw it out or whatever, and uh, he ends up going to a shrink. They give him Xanax, and like most of this this episode, he's like fucked up on pills and in La La Land. But anyways, uh, the Moist Maker, what is it? There's a lot of different renditions of the Moist Maker on, uh, online. Um, you can see on YouTube, uh, what's his name, Binging with Babish or whatever. He has his little rendition, and if you go on Pinterest, there's a thousand different renditions of it there too i love babish by the way one of my favorite youtube channels oh yeah he, incredible uh I, I mean he's super popular now but i i was watching him back when he still had the fraser intro where he literally just ripped the fraser <laughs> theme song yes definitely <laughs> so, so you're an og oh my god he's great his content's great and uh Honestly, if we're going back to talking about this Friends episode quickly, uh, this is probably one of the best uh, Ross moments in that show. Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah. It's a very Ross-centric episode, I feel like. Mm-hmm. And uh, if I if I have to pick like a handful of episodes to voluntarily watch, this is probably one of them. For sure. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's, it's a good one. Absolutely. So the moist maker. Describe what's in the moist maker. I need to know what what is this sandwich all about. The moist maker really refers to just the middle piece of bread of the sandwich, which is like coated in uh, what soaked in gravy. Um, but basically, it's a bunch of leftovers from Thanksgiving. Uh, you use three pieces of bread. You slap some mayo on it. You take some romaine lettuce and throw it in the mix. Then there's turkey and cranberry sauce, stuffing, you know, all of that. You can put it together however you want. But um, the biggest part is, like I said, the uh, gravy-soaked piece of bread in the middle. That's what makes it the moist maker. Um, so you could think of it as like... The Big Mac of Thanksgiving sandwiches, if you will, with that uh, third piece of bread divider in the middle. (laughs) So what do you think about the actual moist maker itself? This gravy soaked piece of bread. Does that hold any appeal to you? Uh, Honestly, yeah, kind of, man. Like I could see where a lot of people might think it's kind of disgusting. But um, man, I'm all for it. I've never done it. And I'm planning to this year, hopefully, if I have enough leftovers. But uh, yeah, I'm all about it. I'll take it. How about you? There's just something about a soggy anything that (laughs) just, I don't know. I I, I can't, I want to, like, I know flavor-wise for that sandwich, it would probably be the best way to get the flavor of the gravy in the sandwich without making a total mess. Sure. But I don't know. There's just something about just a soggy piece of bread, like, like a sad Big Mac almost. You know? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it it kind of just doesn't sound appetizing to me. I can I can see from that angle. I will say, for a long, long time, I always thought the idea of a Thanksgiving sandwich, like a leftover sandwich, was gross. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until semi recently that I actually tried it, and I get it now. Like I understand the whole appeal to it. They're actually really tasty. So would I try it? Yeah, I'd try a voice maker for sure. I just, it's the texture that I don't know about, you know? That's oh, what yeah, me. I can see that. Now, uh, going back to your, your sandwich here that you're talking about, now where exactly did you have this? Was it your own leftovers or did you go to a store? So I worked in a deli okay. when I was in college for one summer. They were... Um, extended family of mine who I, I didn't really know them, but I still use that leverage to my advantage to get a job. And it was, you know, the, it was the summertime, but I guess one of the more popular sandwiches that they had and that they offered were a Thanksgiving sandwich. And I had people calling all the time in the summer asking about the Thanksgiving sandwich and people who were genuinely pissed off that they couldn't get a Thanksgiving sandwich in July. And I was like, uh, I don't know. And I just kept thinking about it. I'm like, man, that just doesn't sound appealing to me. But to have people calling in the middle of the summer to try this Thanksgiving sandwich, like, I guess to some people, it's got to be really good. Almost like McRib level levels of good, you know? Oh, yeah. So 
it started back then, and I always sort of had this bias where I'm like, I don't, I don't want that. That just doesn't sound good. And then something happened. I think I ended up trying one for the first time maybe a year or two ago. And uh, I don't know. It hit. And it hit hard, and I said, oh, wow. Nice, I've been nice. missing out on this all my life. Right. What an idiot I am. <laughs> and uh, I actually just recently got one maybe a week or two ago. Mm-hmm. These, uh, a local deli started actually serving them again, so I had one. And, man, just as good. Like, you can't get a bad Thanksgiving sandwich, I'm convinced. You know? It's oh, yeah. It's kind of like yeah. how it's really – even the worst pizza you have is still pretty good. Oh, yeah, sure. Like, I think the same logic applies to a Thanksgiving sandwich, honestly. I can see that. Do you know what Get-Go is? It's like a Giant Eagle branded store or, like, gas station. No, I don't think I have those around here. Okay, so Get-Go. Actually, I don't know when they started doing them. Um, I only noticed it, like, two or three years ago. They do a sandwich seasonally for Thanksgiving called the Pilgrim, and it's a sub. It has um, the, the bread is actually stuffing bread, so like all the seasonings and stuff that you would get in stuffing, and then they oh, throw like that sounds so oh man good it's oh my god it's pretty good. Um, what else? They put like turkey on it, and um, oh I can't I'm not even sure what's all on it honestly, man. Uh, I know that they you can get like. Uh, cranberry sauce thrown in there too. But yeah, it's really good. I, I really like it. And this year, I planned on reviewing it, so I don't want to give too much away about it. But um, this year, they have three different ways of getting the Pilgrim. They have the uh, the sub, then they have it in like a, a tortilla wrap kind of thing. And then they also have just like a bowl where it's like, I don't know, all the contents. Uh, mixed like, in a bowl. A, like a... <laughs> Like the Colonel's famous bowl or whatever. Yeah, or yeah, it's it's a lot like that. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that sounds really smart. Maybe we should try to get a meeting over at KFC and pitch them the Thanksgiving famous bowl. Has that ever been a thing? It should be. If it isn't, it should be a thing. Right. <laughs> well, that's that's how I'm ending this segment. Is that KFC? If you want to buy the rights for a Thanksgiving famous bowl, uh, you can send us an email at itstemboysofficial at gmail dot com. I'll be waiting your reply. You have 72 hours. You know what I love about Thanksgiving, Howie? The turkey terry. And? Parades. And? Football. The big sales the day after. And? Football. Tomorrow only from 7 a.m. to noon, Radio Shack's incredible early bird savings. RCA CD player with car kit, $38. Rugrats talking clock, $10. Sharp organizer. All right, Grimey. Well, for my first pick here, I decided to go a little bit different. Because I, I think I mentioned to you, I was having a little bit of trouble thinking my way around a fa- favorite Thanksgiving things episode here. For sure. Because um, I think you and I tend to think of things as things. <laughs> you know, <laughs> either it's, uh, I don't know, a toy or it's an episode of a TV show or something. You know what I mean? Something that's almost tangible in a way. Right, right. And... Uh, this one, while it is tangible, I don't know if you can hear that. I can. But you can. I am holding in my hands a 21-year-old Radio Shack Black Friday ad Ooh. from November 23rd, 2000. Just crinkle that up a little bit more. I need to hear it some you more. You want a little more? Yeah, I need that. That's some of that good that's, ASMR. That's good stuff? Yeah. <laughs> AS, I can see it now. ASMR, uh, 1990 Black Friday ad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will be taking photos of this and posting it over on the website because I feel like everybody needs to take a look at this because it's incredible. Absolutely. Um, and it's amazing that the, the condition that this was preserved in for 21 years, uh, <laughs> just like a newspaper ad. Um I will say on the front cover, uh, we have front and center, $15 for five hours only, doorbuster deal, 7 a.m. to noon on Black Friday, the robotic pet dog. That was just the thing back then, wasn't it? It really was, man. 
robotic animals. Mm-hmm. And you knew that they were like big once McDonald's started making fake toys of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the McDonald's toys yeah. that had no robotics in them whatsoever. But yeah. they're like, yeah, yeah, see, it looks like that though, yeah. right? You like press the button on the top and the ears pop out or whatever. Yeah. So I know I'm going to backtrack a little bit here because I haven't properly introduced my first pick yet. So my first pick is Thanksgiving morning. We got the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade playing in the background. My dad just walked in the front door. He's got a 63-pound newspaper, the Thanksgiving (laughs) edition of the newspaper. (laughs) That that is chock full of Black Friday ads. Hell yeah. And uh, that's my first pick is, is Thanksgiving morning. There was nothing, nothing that I looked forward to more when I was a kid and then subsequently when I was a teenager, and even now. I mean, they still make newspapers now on Black Friday. It's just a little bit different because we've got like a month worth of deals now. You know, right, it's right. not one day like it used to be. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I know I'm cheating a little bit by saying, well, this isn't a tangible thing. Well, it was at one point a tangible thing, right? Oh, yeah, certainly. And, and it, there's just something about this for me that screams Thanksgiving. Because when I was a kid and I was looking through these ads, usually I was looking through them because I was picking out my Christmas presents that I wanted, right? Like Thanksgiving kind of signaled to me the the green flag. I can start the race for Christmas. I can just circle anything and everything in all of these ads so that I can start picking out the gifts that I want for Christmas. Um, but... I know it's sort of Christmas focused, like it sounds like it's a Christmas thing, but it's it's just an experience that's uniquely Thanksgiving. Like, yeah, absolutely. I'm thinking forward to the Christmas season, sure, but I'm doing it on this day where like I'm at home, I'm very cozy, you know. My I, my house smells incredible because they're they're cooking all the food. My mom's over in the kitchen running back and forth between the kitchen to the living room because she always says, now tell me when Snoopy's on. Tell me when Snoopy's on because she always wanted to see the the Snoopy uh, balloon come down. So it was just me and my sister, and we're just – we've got all this newspaper just sprawled out at our feet. We're calling our mom. She's running back and forth. Um, I don't know. This this is like the most Thanksgiving to me – from my personal life that there was. So I, I'm just curious, like, am I alone in this? Did you also do this too? So uh, I was more familiar with, like, the Sears wish books and J.C. Penny Christmas catalogs and stuff like that. And um, as far as I can tell, uh, they're pretty much one and the same. But, I don't know, the Black Friday ads are a little bit better because, like, these are marked down things, things that are going to be, like, <laughs> really cheap that's true you know what i mean so uh that's true no i completely get the appeal um i really am kind of the wrong person to talk to about it because i've only recently started doing like the black friday thing uh it's definitely my girlfriend's thing um i i do wish that i could go back in time and like revisit these like or not revisit but visit these moments that i might have missed with a, a black friday ads when i was a kid yeah and there was just something about it. Now, like I said, when I was a kid, it was more just like me picking out, you know, the presents that I wanted. Oh, sure. But um, now, if there's any parents with kids in the car, skip forward 15 seconds. Utilize the skip button right now because I don't want them to hear this. Go. Okay. <laughs> so when my dad and my parents told me about Santa Claus, uh, I was old but i was pretty inconsolable and so to make up for it my dad told me what he does on black friday which was hey well now that you know you can come out with me early on black friday and we can go pick out gifts and you'll know what jilly's getting ahead of time and i was like oh wow so black friday took on a whole new meaning when i was like entering my you know my teen years like my tweens and my teens because i was like wow so this is how it happens, man. Like, this is this is how Christmas happens. So I thought that was really cool because it, it, it then then you know it took on a new meeting for me. All of these ads every year because like, ooh, we're gonna start going out. Me and my dad, just me and my dad doing Christmas shopping. And then um, throughout my high school years, 
um, when my dad and I stopped going out as much. Like, we would go out during the day or whatever. Um, but my friends and I, because now we had licenses and we had way too much free time and we wanted to get out of the house and, like, hang out. This was the way that we could hang out on holidays was uh, my friends would kind of come over here and then we'd all leave and we'd go buy our Black Friday stuff at the doorbusters, which by that time, doorbusters weren't 7 a.m. in the morning like this Radio Shack ad is saying. Right. Doorbusters started here at 1 a.m. The store would open at 1 a.m. So my friends and I would finish up our uh, you know Thanksgivings with our families, and then we'd all convene up to like Best Buy usually, and then wait out in the cold for like four or five hours waiting for the store to open up. And my, all of my family loved that because like my grandfather, especially he'd be like, so Derek, you and your friends going out tonight. Yep. Can you pick me this, pick me up this? Absolutely. So I, I just had a, one point in my life where I had like 10 people. I, I felt like a drug <laughs> dealer, man. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. Where the, I was just making the rounds to like my grandfather and my grandmother and my aunts and my uncles. And then all these people were just giving me cold, hard cash. I would have like a thousand dollars in my pocket <laughs> and I'd be like, I need to get a TV for him. I got to get a laptop for him. He wants a camera. They want a PS, uh, PS three. And it was, yeah, it was awesome, man. So, uh, yeah, that's my first Thanksgiving pick was looking through black Friday newspaper ads because boy, there's a lot of memories there and I miss it. I still do it, but I miss how it used to be. Oh, I was looking at the big pastor. They're lean and green, and boy, are they ever on the scene. Direct from their constant appearance in Los Angeles, it's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles band, Awamunga. Hey, these heroes on Half Shell love their pizza, and the motto of their national career is, you do more good with music than with weapons. So keep up the good work, you do. All right, man. So it's 1990, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. What's white hot right now at this point in time? Can you take a guess? Hmm. Let me think. 1990, popular. God, I mean, it's got to be the upcoming Atari Jaguar. Am I correct? Yes, or... that's it. You nailed it. Ah, oh, oh, man. I am, I am so good at this. <laughs> no. It's not that. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> well, what could be... Hmm, wait a minute. Let me guess. Is it four teenage brothers who have been horribly mutated by a secret ooze, and they happen to be turtles? You might be onto something with this one. You just might be. You might be there. What is it, Grammy? What is your What is your pick? What is this hit of 1990? None other than the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> but what form are these turtles taking? That's my main question to you. Oh, one of the absolute worst forms I think I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's 1990. I'm obviously too young to uh, have seen this. I would have been, what, a year old. But I do remember this specific iteration of the TMNT. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's the Coming Out of Our Shells tour, which sounds more like uh, someone's telling someone that they're changing their sexual orientation rather than anything that a, a kid would be into. <laughs> yeah, I, I have heard of this infamous Coming Out of Their Shells tour. I may have even dabbled in it a little a little bit here or there. Uh, boy, it sure was a thing that they did, I'll, I'll tell you that. If anyone doesn't know what the Coming Out of Our Shells tour is, it was this uh, little kind of like a Broadway musical show that they did for Radio City. The turtles look pretty awful. They're not looking great at all. They're kind of skinny. Uh, they don't have shells either. They're just wearing like these jean jackets and they're kind of uh, decked out in this like rock apparel. Um, they have like these little, I don't know if I would call them metal symbols i don't know it's kind of like very reminiscent of like kiss's face makeup with like these little pendants that they put over their eyes and stuff like that so it's like very 80s hair bandy kind of style they come out on this like really crazy looking car it kind of looks like the mutant module if you've ever seen that from the cartoon or the toys uh and they're they're singing from the tour they're singing this song it's called you can count on us it's just very awful now i like i said i'm not really too familiar with the uh performance 
in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Luckily, YouTube's there to help us out with that if we haven't seen it before. But what I am familiar with is the Coming Out of Our Shells tour, the making of VHS. Um, I didn't have the VHS with the actual tour. I had the making of. Well, I was probably four or five years old, so I like bought into it really heavy. Um, in the, in, have you ever seen this? No, so is the making of... Uh, is it like a, a mockumentary where they're pretending like the turtles are real? Yes, and, and totally. This whole thing, like they, they yes. are the stars of the show. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, it is. It's, That's awesome. See, and that was what like kind of fucked with me when I was a kid is like when you watch a making of, you're expecting to see all the people underneath the costumes and like how they make these animatronics, if they have any, how they make them work. And um, it totally didn't happen that way at all. Like, the whole time. Yeah, no, I just imagine how badly that must have fucked with a kid's head. Where, like, you've got parents who are like, no, that's those are just guys in costume. The turtles aren't real. And then they buy you this VHS tape, and they're like, no, dude, we're real. <laughs> and you're like, well, you're telling me one thing, and they're telling me something else. So what's the deal, Karen? Are they real, or are they fake? Because I can't wrap my little kid brain around this. Yeah, dude, totally. And, like, this, I, I truly believe the turtles were real for the longest time because of this fucking movie. Of course, you would have to. They, I mean... They're, they're probably selling it well enough where you're like, I don't know, pretty convincing to me. It's like the Bigfoot tape, right? You know. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, well, Bigfoot's fake. Yeah, but look at this video. Mm-hmm. No, he's fake, dude. Yeah, but the video exists. Right, and like in the parade when they're performing and in Radio City when they're performing on stage, like their mouths don't move at all. They don't have that movement. But like when you're watching this videotape of the making of and it cuts to these segments where they're talking, like the turtles are talking about the music they're making. There's a part where they're actually in a recording booth playing instruments and stuff like that and they're recording that happening. But when they talk to you, in this film, the mouths move, you know, relatively well. Like, they don't look near as bad as they do when they're uh, performing. They don't really cut character either. Like, the whole time, they're just talking about how they were in the sewer and, like, banging on trash cans and stuff. And, like, the one part, I think Mikey or Raph is like, the next thing we knew, we were making music. And I was like, is this really fucking happening? Like, what the fuck? Uh (laughs) You know what would have been really great is if they, like, really went into the whole rock star bit and then, like, just, like, showed the downfall of the Turtles before their, like, reunion tour where everything got good again. Like, Michelangelo's hooked on drugs, man. Oh, totally. (laughs) Leo is a total alcoholic womanizer. His family (laughs) life is going to hell. (laughs) Uh, I know that's a little aside. I'd also just like to make... A quick mention, while you're over here telling me about this, I just found out that the Coming Out of Our Shells album is streaming, like, most places. Yeah, it sure is. It really is. I didn't know that. That's amazing. I'm going to be listening to this right after we're done with the show tonight. I mean, I think it's best that you do. I really do. Hollywood stars sing back up. For five guys, millions of females are sweet on. This Orlando, Florida-based group is tearing up the charts with their number one hit, Tearing Up My Heart, and they'll do it one more time. In sync. All right, Grimey, so you picked Ninja Turtle singing. I'm going to pick, as stated by disgraced former uh, NBC announcer Matt Lauer, stated at the beginning of this segment from the 1998 Thanksgiving Day Parade, the Orlando boy band in sync. <laughs> that was a mouthful. I really just kept talking and talking, hope, hoping that that sentence was going to end. But yeah, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> my, my next pick is in uh, sync. This was pre their i'll call it their their hit era with the whole no strings attached album so they're off they're riding off the success of their first album uh in the 1998 macy's thanksgiving day parade and they're on the m&m float i sent you the video to this did you end up seeing this float, Grimey? I didn't see this float. Oh my god! I'm gonna. It is, I'm gonna actually check it out. Yeah, you, really quick, right? You now. check it out. You check it out. So they're on this float. They're singing their biggest hit at this point, 
uh, Tearing Up My Heart, which pretty good song. And and I'm just going to go on a, a little side rant while Grammy's looking this up. I am just a huge fan of NSYNC. <laughs> like, <laughs> still to this day and there is a point in my life where i was in uh, shame to admit that but no longer all right i i'm i'm out there with it i love in sync and i'm praying for their re what's the word i'm looking for for them to reunite you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> for a comeback you're hoping for a comeback yeah comeback tour oh man really. and i'm hoping you know like i feel like justin timberlake has kind of been <laughs> disgraced in these past couple of years. So there's probably like a good chance of this happening. He's probably going to need money. You know, yeah. So I was going to say, you think JT is going to allow that though? I'm at the point where I, I was never the biggest Justin Timberlake fan. No? And I'm about to say, fuck Justin Timberlake. Oh man. Seriously. See, I feel like if it's any one of them that I would be a fan of, it would be JT. JT. It's, no. it's only because we're pretty big fans of uh, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Oh, and they're okay. like, I don't know, best okay. friends or whatever. And yeah. every once in a while he appears on there and it's, it's pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. He's, he's a funny guy. He did a lot with The Lonely Island, too. Yes. I love The Lonely yes. Island. Lonely Island but, so uh, good. No, I'm a JC boy. JC. Okay. <laughs> and I get made fun of a lot because I'm a JC boy. But let me tell you, JC... He was he was the leading man of that crew. Everybody, all the big media wanted you to think that JT was the star. Uh uh-uh, uh, it was JC. He's a class act. Let me tell you. Speaking of JC, if you watch this, so you can. It's hard to make out at first because it's you know over twenty years old and it's like a really kind of low res. Oh yeah, it's, YouTube rip. I'm watching it right now. It's pretty hazy, but you could still make out Justin Timberlake's oodles of noodles hair. Oodle oodles of noodles. That's right. <laughs> but. Yeah, they're all wearing coats. Makes sense, right? Obviously, it's November. It's New York City. It's probably freezing cold. Look at JC's navy blue Tommy Hilfiger jacket. Oh, yeah. What are you seeing right now, Grimy? Uh, they're all in big they look puffy really jackets. shiny to you. Yeah, it's definitely shiny. It's shiny. It's like too shiny, right? Now look at the sky. It doesn't it look like it's nighttime. Doesn't it look like they're performing at night. Yeah, it does. Like it is dark. Yeah, I figured it out, man. The longer you watch that video, it is pouring rain outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's like thousands of umbrellas in the crowd. Yeah. These poor guys are getting like robbed by their manager at this point, <laughs> and they don't know it. <laughs> they, they're, they've they been put on the M&M's float, and it is downpouring. And these guys have to just sing their song like a bunch of friggin' a bunch of bozos on Thanksgiving Day instead of being home with their families for the entertainment of us. So that's why I picked NSYNC's 1998 performance because not only is it a banger, not only is the float pretty great. I know I just trashed it, but it's pretty awesome. They're out there doing it for us, man. Oh yeah. They're getting sure. rained on. They're performing for the people. They are. You're right. It's it's one for the books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what would have been the worst um, Macy's Thanksgiving Day performance? Uh, that? R. Kelly. R. Kelly. <laughs> that, that would have... <laughs> yeah, it may... They would have had to hand out ponchos to the crowd. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stuff. It would have been some yellow rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking R. Kelly. <laughs> Oh, every time I think of R. Kelly, I think about uh, the Dave Chappelle segment. I don't remember that. You don't know that one? Oh, it fuck, it's so funny. I don't remember it. Oh, it's so good. Look it up after this. I'll I'll look it up. Uh, but quickly, before we hop off this uh, sync love fest, I will just say that Eminem floats real weird, though. Like, red and yellow M&Ms are represented in great detail, in great honor. They're like... 20 feet tall, these beautiful statues on this float. It's like uh, like a, a beautiful homage to these pop culture characters. And then they got the blue M&M, and it's just some dinky, normal-ass size guy <laughs> in like a felt costume just like running around on the back of this float. And he looks so out of place considering that he... <laughs> He's like a fifth the size of the other two M and M's. I don't know. It just cracked me up. Yeah, and he's like kind of wrinkled in and like shriveled in. He kind of almost takes the shape of like an eggplant. Almost, almost like a California raisin. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Ugh. Poor guy. So yeah, in sync. Oh, and I will mention quickly if you guys do go find this video, it is followed by uh, ninety eight degrees starring Nick Lachey, and uh, you don't have to stick around for that. 
nobody wants to stick around for 98 <laughs> degrees. But one candy company already has a controversial plan for Thanksgiving dinner. You know, when it comes to candy corn, you either love it or you hate it. And now Brock's is infusing its popular Halloween treat with six flavors of the holiday feast. So they're basically combining Halloween and, and Thanksgiving here. You have a choice of turkey, stuffing, cranberry sauce. Okay, so my next pick is basically it's a genuine love letter to all of the weird food items that have been coming out around Thanksgiving the past couple of years. Uh, I think anybody can agree that like in, in the junk food area of Thanksgiving, um, Thanksgiving's kind of the like underrated and underutilized uh, holiday when it comes to this kind of stuff. They don't get a lot of things, seasonal items, I feel like. Like Halloween's got all their pumpkin spice and their cinnamon, and then you got like, or not cinnamon, but apple. And then Christmas, this seems to be like the uh, toothpaste flavored stuff, you know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like toothpaste flavored things in toothpaste. That's why I don't brush my teeth. Yeah, oh yeah, me neither. Honestly, I usually just kind of <laughs> rinse with water and then let that be that. I scrub it off with my fingernails. Yes, so, you know? and flick it on the mirror. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Uh, so as of recently, anyway, uh, there has been a lot of kind of different um, and kind of wild junk food that has come out. And uh, I think we can kind of thank Joan Soda for this kind of thing. I don't know when it started. I think it was back in like 2003. They debuted their uh, turkey and gravy flavored soda, which was part of like a, a holiday pack. There was like five different flavors for uh, Thanksgiving. I actually have one. I think it's from 2007. Um, it's the Thanksgiving one. It's lost its luster. The colors on the insides of the uh, soda is pretty dull. Looks pretty bad, but um, you know, I still have it. You have shown me that case of soda and I can confirm it looks absolutely disgusting oh it, it, it's terrifying like i can't really tell if there's stuff floating around in it because it's like chalky and kind of pale now but uh yeah 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 definitely not fit for <laughs> most humans to consume at this stage yeah that being said la beast absolutely uh, grimy has actually been saving this for you <laughs> and we cannot get a hold of you please Please take this soda and drink it from him. I think I'm just going to look up the PO and just send it and just uh, hope for the best. <laughs> send it. But anyways, um, yeah, so I really feel like it all started with Joan Soda. Um, and I'm going to name off a couple of the flavors that they've released over the years. So we have flavors like eggnog, Christmas tree, which sounds pretty wild, pear tree, Christmas ham, smoked salmon pate, corn on the cob, broccoli casserole, dinner roll, antacid, peas, wild herb stuffing, Brussels sprouts, and sweet potatoes. Just about every holiday food you can think of. And fucking Christmas tree? Like, what even? <laughs> I don't know. You know what one's really getting me? What's that? And maybe it's just because I've been going through some gastrointestinal uh, distress <laughs> over the past 24 hours. But I want that antacid. Soda, the antacid? Right? I have that. It's part of the, uh, the 2007 Thanksgiving set. <sighs> Listen, I, I'll say it. I like Tums just as it is. Oh, sure. Like, as candy. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'll eat Tums every day. Like, that's probably the best candy out right now. And they're telling me I can't have more than four pieces a day or I need to call my doctor. That's a load of bullshit, okay? So if I can get that sweet, sweet taste of antacid in a nice sugary soda pop, bring it on. Hell yeah. So, yeah, they, they had these holiday packs, I think, from 2003 up until, like, 2008 or nine possibly then enter you know covid season 2020 we had candy corn from brock's that were oh the turkey dinner variety which uh if you're interested you can watch us eat on instagram on the it's dem boys instagram page you have to backtrack a little bit but we did sample those last year and it was pretty horrendous <laughs> Yeah, that was one of the worst experiences of my life, honestly. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Just terrible. Yeah, just terrible. I'll dig it up. I'll dig up that video, and I'll make it easier for you guys to find. But uh, Yes, God. please do. That stuff, I almost threw up on camera. Like, I, I genuinely almost threw up on camera. So one of those, was it the green beans? No, really I don't think the green beans was it. I really think 
Um, and I'll get into this a little bit more too, but the, uh, the guy who, uh, what's his name? His name is Brian Rinker. He is the Walgreens divisional merchandise manager of candy and snacks. Um, he's the reason this all happened. So I think it was the stuffing was the real bad one. Like the turkey was pretty bad. Don't get me wrong, but that stuffing was downright fucking awful. And, uh, in this article, uh, that he's talking about them in when uh, he made them, he actually goes on to say that he would say the stuffing one's the worst and easily tops the uh, the turkey one. Okay. Yeah, I just remembered one of them tasting like vomit, and I, it made me, in turn, want to vomit. Right, so, right. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was the stuffing one, which is, yeah, that, that you're right. You're right now that I think about it because I was so sad because stuffing is like my favorite side. Yeah, yeah. And you would think, you know, like this, if any of the really bad ones you're going to like, it's got to be this one. Um, and it ended up being the worst one. Really did. Yep, yep, yep. Those came out in 2020. Uh, they're returning this year with two additional flavors being thrown in the mix and – taking away two that used to be in the last one. Uh, I did not buy these. I did not feel like spending $10 on eBay for them. Um, they disappear rather fast. They're at Walgreens. They put them out not during Thanksgiving. They put them out with the Halloween stuff. And I didn't hit a, a Walgreens any time during Halloween. Sometimes you don't feel like paying $10 for candy corn. It's probably for the best, <laughs> honestly. It you is. I mean... <laughs> We experienced it last year. We can only get more let down this year, I think. I agree. But yeah, so I was saying that Jones Soda uh, brought stuff like this to fruition. And um, so the guy, Brian, actually goes into talking about Jones Soda and how things like Jones Soda, Jelly Belly, Harry Potter Jelly Beans, and even Pringles, who did the Friendsgiving Thanksgiving pack a couple years ago, um, all of these things kind of helped him into making this product. Uh, they made a deal with Brock's. It was about three years until this specific set of candy corn uh, came about. And really, what better time to do it than 2020 when everybody was stuck in their houses, not able to do anything? I mean, it kind of set the internet on fire. That's true. When there wasn't much to do, so... If you could get your hands on uh, these disgusting candy corn, then it was something to do for like an afternoon, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if not anything else, then just like a quick random Instagram post or a quick YouTube video or, you know, anything. Or, yeah. you know, you just sit at the glow of your computer with a couple of family members and try them all at once. Pretty much all of these were good for. So uh, 2021, Jones Soda is releasing, or actually they already did release uh, the turkey gravy soda again after like a decade hiatus. So, um, and I have to say that it's like, it's, it's like it came full circle. So Jones Soda came out, Brock's did their thing. Brock's is returning again this year after having such good success. And Jones Soda is like, well, I guess we're going to capitalize on the success. So uh, yeah, if I'm thankful for anything, I'm thankful that uh, Jones Soda exists and helped pave the way for disgusting Thanksgiving food like this. In the year 1621, the Pilgrims held their first Thanksgiving feast. They invited the great Indian chief, Massasoit, who brought 90 of his brave Indians and a great abundance of food. Governor William Bradford and Captain Miles Standish were honored guests. Elder William Brewster. All right, so my next pick, I think, is probably a lot of people's pick for their favorite Thanksgiving things. And it's got to be the desserts, man. I don't know. When I think Thanksgiving, aside from the cliche, like turkey and like the traditional thanksgiving spread or even like oh the macy's thanksgiving day parade i feel like the one thing that almost everybody looks forward to at thanksgiving are the desserts absolutely there's just something about a thanksgiving dessert that is so incredibly american <laughs> oh yeah yeah you know what i, I mean agree. like we've spent all day stuffing our faces we've probably eaten more calories in a single day than we do like all week at any other point in the year. Oh yeah, sure, easily. But like, let's crank it up to 11. Let's throw all caution to the wind. We all feel like we're gonna bust, we're gonna throw up. Let's just pile on like some of the most high calorie desserts 
the most decadent, rich, sweet desserts that anybody's ever seen in their life. And it's totally worth it. For it's sure. It's totally freaking worth it every single year. It doesn't matter how full you are. doesn't matter what it is. I just feel like Thanksgiving desserts hit way differently. Absolutely. It's the American way, man. So uh, what are your favorite desserts? Hit me with them. So mine aren't like traditional. You know, everybody loves their pumpkin pie or their pecan pie, an apple pie. It's always like a pie with people, which, okay, I will admit like one of my picks is a pie, but it barely counts as a pie. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my picks, I'll say the pie first. It's a Toll House pie. Have you ever had a Toll House pie? Do you know what that is? I really honestly don't think I've ever had a Toll House pie. You're going to have to explain this one to me. I'm I'm picturing like a cookie or something. Okay, well, you're not far off. Okay. I'm going to find a photo right now, and I'm going to send it over to you so you get a uh, you yeah. get an idea of what, what I'm talking about. It's like Nickelodeon smell vision but with pictures. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let me send this over to you. Okay. I got it. Let's see what you got here. Well, fuck me up. That looks delicious. It, yeah, it's like kind of like a cookie, <laughs> but like it looks like it has some gooey shit in the inside there. Yeah, dude. So the, it's basically a cookie pie. It is just like ninety percent chocolate chips. It looks Nestle like Nestle chocolate chips. But uh, yeah, just this description here because I've never made one because that's just it. You don't make a Toll House pie. Somebody else makes a Toll House pie. I'm not even convinced that people know how to make it anymore. They just, like, appear out of nowhere, <laughs> at least around my house. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know where they come from, but they're always amazing. So the description here on this recipe says, it's a sweet, creamy richness of a brown sugar base combined with chopped nuts. Oh, this one is throwing nuts. I was going to say, it. it looks like there's definitely walnuts or something in that. That is so weird. We do not fuck around with nuts in my house. No? Oh, see, I'm all about the, the, the walnuts and stuff. Like, I love chocolate chip walnut cookies, and this looks right up my fucking alley. My dad is all about the nuts, but, like, my sister, my mom, and myself were always like, can you just skip the nuts and throw <laughs> extra chocolate chips in it? <laughs> I mean, that's a win, too, if you ask me. You know. I mean, I'm sure it probably brings an extra depth of flavor to something that's otherwise just sugar, but, you know, whatever. So, okay, I'm reading this recipe quickly here. So it's a pre-made uh, pie shell, by the way. Okay. Like, don't don't start messing around with, like, making your own pie crust and what. No, this is not the dessert for that, okay? <laughs> it, it is, like, a step above a white trash dessert, but it is so good that you'll just forget about it. It's got... Uh, eggs, flour, sugar, brown sugar, butter, chocolate chips. Wow, that's literally it. That's that's all that's in there. <laughs> yeah, so this <laughs> is like literally just a big cookie pie. Yeah. And, uh, oh, man, I I'm not usually one for crust either, but the crust on this is just like so buttery and like so flaky and so good. Right. Uh yeah, yeah, you you gotta try one of these. I'm going to. I think this. I might actually do this for Thanksgiving now that I uh, I've never seen this before. It looks amazing. It's literally the only thing I can think about right now. Great job, <laughs> great job. <laughs> it's good. It's good cold. It's good room temp. It's good warmed up. I'm seeing all over Google right now. People are throwing like vanilla ice cream on top. I bet that would be amazing. Oh man, yeah. So. This is my one. This is this is one of mine. All right. What else you got? My other favorite Thanksgiving dessert are pumpkin rolls. And those I've found are super underrated because, again, everybody always goes for, like, pumpkin pies, which they're fine, but you can do so much better with a pumpkin flavor than just a plain old pumpkin pie. Have you ever had a pumpkin roll? So you're talking about like the pumpkin, you flatten out the cake, you roll it up, unroll it, throw the uh, the yeah. icing in the middle. So uh, yeah. yeah, my mom is kind of like a baker. She does like uh, sell baked goods and stuff online. Yeah, she texted me yesterday. She made 15 pumpkin rolls. No way. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very familiar. We get a pumpkin roll every year. I think I still have one in the freezer from last year. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. You, well, you send me the, the old one, and you take the new one. Okay, and, that's uh, fair. Oh, there's just, yeah, like, I'll take the old one. we get so many pumpkin rolls a year that, like, uh, we just don't get through it all. Um, 
but yeah, I'm very familiar. I love pumpkin rolls, and I love that you picked it. Uh, it's just, you know what it is for me. It's the it's the cream cheese frosting. Oh fuck yeah, inside. dude! And you can't have a different oh. frosting at all. Like it has to be the cream no. cheese frosting, or that thing does not taste yeah. near as lit. Yeah, yeah. I I would also say like. I would even probably throw a carrot cake on this list. Not that I've ever had one at Thanksgiving, but I think it's just that cream cheese frosting that I associate with this time of year, oh, like sure. Thanksgiving. Yeah, absolutely. So I would give I would give carrot cake a pass solely because it's got cream cheese frosting. Yeah, there's something about uh, the cream cheese frosting with all the like the spices, like oh, it just works so fucking mm-hmm. good together. Mm-hmm. All right, so those are my two. Uh, favorite Thanksgiving desserts. Do you have any desserts that you'd like to throw on before we uh, hop off this onto your last pick? Hmm, desserts. You know, uh, I, I keep it pretty boring. Um, aside from the uh, pumpkin roll you just mentioned, um, I do really like pumpkin pie a lot. Uh, I never used to like it when I was a kid. Uh, it's sort of Same. something that's Same. kind of growing on me within the past, like, 10 years probably. Sure. I can see that. Now, here's my suggestion. Have you ever had a squash pie? No, I haven't. I haven't had squash pie or sweet potato pie. So I think that squash pie, if I'm not mistaken, is typically made with butternut squash. Oh, okay. So it's on the sweeter side. Yeah, but I know that's what my aunt tends to make instead of making pumpkin pies. Okay. And I've always preferred that to a pumpkin pie. But like you, I am growing more accustomed to a pumpkin pie i just think that like because i didn't grow up with it and i don't have like that nostalgia for it i'm kind of like yeah i don't know give me a pumpkin roll or something you know yeah for sure yeah other than that um probably uh turkey dinner candy corn really (laughs) (laughs) fuck you (laughs) (laughs) at schneider's we make our european charcuterie the time-honored way Peppercorn and fennel give our Italian salami its zesty spice, while our German salami gets its balanced taste from nutmeg and coriander. Then we take our time and air dry them to bring out the right flavor and texture. While we're on the topic of food, that happens to be my next pick, is all the wonderful food you can eat at Thanksgiving. Um, But not just... All the typical stuff. I mean, when I think about Thanksgiving, obviously I think about stuffing, turkey, potatoes, gravy, ham, green bean casserole, all that good stuff. Those are all like my favorite foods bundled into one thing. And um, you have to have all those. If you lose one, it's just not the same. So like that's how I feel about all that food, just to get that off of my chest. But for me, lately, within the past, like, five years, what's been really fun for me is to make a humongous fucking cheese board. They're a good way to start getting excited about the meal that's coming. Mm. So you're talking some good charcuterie? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to get too fancy with the, the my wording. I don't know if too many people know what charcuterie is. But yeah, absolutely, a charcuterie board. I, I'd like to just pause and emphasize the fact that I said the actual word chart charcuterie. Charcuterie. <laughs> you told me that that was too fancy. Oh, so. yeah, charcuterie. I'm all about that. Yeah, charcuterie. Yeah. Yeah, shark. I tell you what, if I eat enough, I might shark cootery all over the place. <laughs> I don't know, just uh, <laughs> cheese in general, man. It's it's uh it's a bit much for me, but like I still force it upon myself either way. Just one of them. Much things. like I did yesterday. I'll <laughs> tell you that story. I ate too much parmesan. You you heard this, but I'm going to tell all the listeners at home. I got some fancy ass 40 month aged parmesan cheese from over at uh, Trader Joe's. And I cut off too big of a hunk, but I committed to it. And I said, I'm eating all of it. I'm eating every last bit because this block of cheese cost me $6, which is not a lot. So I don't know why I thought I needed to actually down all that cheese. But either way, I took it as a personal challenge. And, uh, boy, I haven't felt right since. Something went wrong inside me. Right. And uh, <laughs> I still love a cheese board, but don't overdo it. That's all. I learned an important lesson. And see, that's like kind of um, my thought behind it is like you just mentioned this crazy uh, cheese that you just bought, right? So uh, that's one of the things that I really enjoy is like finding new things to put on it, like cheeses I've never tried before, something that's a little bit fancier you don't usually buy all the time throughout the year. Like it's kind of a, well, Thanksgiving's coming. 
I'm going to buy this cheese. It's a little more pricier, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, or maybe it's not pricier. This is a cheese I don't buy all the time. Let's try it for Thanksgiving and see what people think about it. Um, that's, that's true. You know that's what I mean? Fair. It's just one of them mm-hmm. things that you're sitting around the table carrying on with your family or, you know, your aunt's punching your uncle in the face, whatever. Um, that's a different podcast. Yeah. Different, <laughs> different yeah. yeah. Stay tuned. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, it's just a, a nice thing to have in the center. You know, you're getting excited for the big meal. You have uh, a bunch of meat and cheese in front of you or some of my favorite things to put on it, olives, honey, orange marmalade, you know, things that, uh, you don't typically eat throughout the year. Okay. Like, wait, what olives? Olives. So, uh, like green olives. So I like stuffed with garlic. I, I'm not much of the uh, stuffed with garlic fan. Uh, it fucks oh. with me way too much. Like I would, I would okay. definitely would, but like, okay. oh fair, man, fair. the heartburn is just, uh, I'm not willing to go there with it. it. But, um, I, get it. I do I get actually it. buy, uh, stuffed olives that are stuffed with like blue cheese oh yeah those are good yeah those are really good they're, they're some of my favorite ones no we're before you move on we're getting into the nitty-gritty of this cheese board because i've been really becoming somewhat obsessed with a cheese board myself okay and i've been making them more and more recently oh fuck yeah pickles you've been putting the uh cornish cornish on there? Uh, so i've never tried cornish i have seen them on youtube all the time yeah this is a thing i do in my spare time some people um uh, balance their checkbooks and check out their 401k. I look at cheese boards on YouTube. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, we're building something important here. Yes, okay, it is right. We're building memories. Yeah. All right. Via food. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So you got to get on the Cornichons. Okay. Because, oh my God, they are to die for. Figs? You throw figs on your board? Oh, yeah, man. They just really spruce the board up. They make them look really, really nice. Um, they look nice, but I don't know. You, I get these little tiny figs Okay. that eat real easy. Yeah. Man, it just... And I know this is going to sound really stupid to everybody listening. They just taste like Fig Newtons, but like without the cookie around it. Okay. Like I've had some figs that are kind of like a pain in the ass to eat. Mm-hmm. These little tiny ones that I bought recently, yeah, I, I don't know. They're they're real good, and add a nice little spruce up the flavor, a little uh, color to the board, like you're saying. Oh yeah, good. yeah. What about meat? You throw meat on your board? So I want to touch on the figs real quick. So I never, uh, oh, yeah. I never bought figs for them yet. Uh, we were looking for some of them just last week, and I couldn't find any. So. Uh, this past week, I decided to buy fig jam, which I haven't tried yet. Hopefully, it's delicious because it was a decent-sized jar. I don't know. It looks good. It looks like it's going to be good. So, yeah, uh, figs, I definitely want to try that sometime soon. And the way you describe them makes me even more eager to try them. <laughs> I mean, I feel like fig newtons are something that like you and I are like really into. Oh, yeah, I agree. I don't know why they're as good as they are, but... They just are. Oh yeah, they just hit hit so well. They hit different. Mm-hmm. Like they they're an old people's cookie, but are they? Or maybe we're just getting old, you know. Right. No, I liked them when I was a kid too, though. And like I knew they I were old too. people I cookies. But I, like, I loved them. They're so good. Yeah, so good. But uh, yeah. Um, as far as meats go, um, so I like to get some prosciutto out there. Just uh, yeah, it's some good stuff, man. Uh, I really never had any of it until this past year, and uh, a lot of I know a lot of people in my family don't really like it. They think it's a little bit too chewy, um, but I fucking love it. I absolutely love prosciutto. God, now I really sound like a food nerd. There's different quality prosciutto. Oh yeah, absolutely. My sister, my sister thought she didn't like prosciutto either. Mm-hmm. I bought one a couple weeks ago, that was like. Real high quality prosciutto. Yeah. And dude, it's so cliche to say, but it's the truth. It just like melts in your mouth. No, oh, no, you're like, so right. You don't have to chew it at all. No. It just does all the work for you. It really does. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. It's it's fucking to die for. <laughs> what about mortadella? You buy any mortadella? Uh I haven't fucked with the mortadella before yet. Um that's something I'm Ooh. definitely venturing into hopefully this Thanksgiving. You know what it is, right? Isn't it? Uh, I'm, it's just Italian bologna, baby. Is that all it is? Isn't it? Doesn't it have Dude. like the stuff in it, like uh? Yeah, it's got like the big like like fat spots. Yeah, like the chunks or whatever. 
Yeah, but it's basically just Italian bologna, and it is so good. You're going to love it. Awesome. Yeah, man. I'll definitely have to try that. Um, one thing I did try recently was, uh, oh, I've never had it before. I've had the uh, Mexican style before. Um, what the fuck is it chorizo? called? Chorizo. Yeah. So I had Italian yeah. chorizo for the first time over Halloween, actually. Um, okay. Which was chorizo's real good. I liked it. I liked this the Italian kind, but uh I don't know. The first time I had chorizo, it was the Mexican sausage style and oh man, I can't untaste that ever and I just love it so much. <laughs> the uh the Italian kind that was like in like pepperoni form. It was good, but it wasn't like, I don't know. It was kind of bland and maybe it was just because it was a cheaper kind. Okay, okay. Chorizo, no chorizo, whatever. What about the gabagool? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what that gabagool is? No, Come on. I have no idea. When you find out what the gabagool is, report back because you're going to love the, the gabagool. gabagool. What is it? <laughs> it sounds the like gabagool. It sounds like something that's in like the Boglands territory. <laughs> it does sound like it's a cartoon <laughs> or something like that, but no, it's an Italian, I think it's a ham or something. I don't know. It's pretty good. That sounds a good spice, to me. A kick. It's pretty deli- Yeah, well, it's fun to say. So if it's fun to say, it's got to be good to eat. Hey, try the gabagool. Eh? <laughs> hey, some fucking gabagool. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, all that stuff, a cheese board in general is just, I don't know. It's a must. If you don't do them for Thanksgiving or for holidays in general, uh, you should really give it a try. It's a lot of fun. Um, I like to do a pretty extravagant one every year, and I try to include something a little bit new or a little bit different, stuff that I'm not uh, always eating all the time. And, uh, yeah, I think if you don't do them, you should try it. You'll like it. Turkey-shaped butter. It doesn't taste like turkey, but it looks like the star of Thanksgiving dinner. Keller's Creamery is selling this novelty dairy product just in time for the holidays. The four-ounce bird sculpture provides eight tablespoons of salted butter. You can gobble. All right, Grimy, we've been having a real good time, despite your lack of knowledge about gabagool-related things, but I'll let it slide. (laughs) I'll let it slide. (laughs) This is my last pick of the evening, and... There's not much to it, but I didn't want to overthink it. You know, I feel like I'm a victim of my own brain sometimes where I just get caught always thinking and overthinking and overanalyzing and, okay, is this the best thing that I could pick or is this the best thing that I could pick? And I said, you know what? Tonight, for my last pick, I'm shutting my brain off. I think, without a doubt, my favorite thing about Thanksgiving every single year, butter turkeys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The butter turkeys. Butter turkey. turkeys. I'm going to let that marinate for just a second. Oh, let me say it one more time. Butter turkeys. <laughs> so for everybody who's at home, like, what the fuck are butter turkeys? Yeah, why don't you explain They're that? They're like, is that some weird Is that some weird regional thing? that they? No. It's literally just a stick of butter that they mold into the shape of a turkey. It's simple but effective. You know? Yeah, they are really kind of cool looking. Um, I think the first time I ever seen them, they weren't in the shape of turkeys. They were in the shape of lambs. Okay. I've seen those before. And I've also seen uh, another thing. Like, I think my mom's even done it before where she buys, like, chocolate turkeys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then she'll put them at everybody's place setting at the table right. before we eat. So <laughs> you just got a little chocolate turkey. But the chocolate chocolate turkeys are cool. I like them, but there's just something so satisfying about that little butter poultry sitting on the table that is so tempting (laughs) for me every year, and every year, inevitably, I get yelled at because I walk over (laughs) with my little butter knife, and it's a ritual for me at this point every year. I chop its turkey, butter turkey head off. <laughs> you know? I was just going to ask you, do you sacrifice the turkey or like, do you just. <laughs> Absolutely. So if I were to have one, I'm pretty sure it would probably just like sit next to the, the jar of cranberry sauce that nobody eats. Well, see, that's it. Like, I think it's more supposed to be decorative than anything. My mom always buys them, A, because she knows that we like them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just because like they're cool, right, right man? Right. Like, I don't know. They're cool, you know? Uh-huh. But, uh, I think she always partially buys them because she wants them on the table and it wants to have this like picturesque 
one minute where she can look at this like beautiful feast that she's created every year with the full fully intact turkey there too you know just like take a minute to take it all in oh yeah it's an it's and that an never happens because i always chop that fucking turkey's head off <laughs> Killed the aesthetic. <laughs> it's just tradition at this point, you know? Right. Much like my Black Friday newspaper ads or my pumpkin rolls or my Toll House pies, <laughs> if there isn't a butter turkey there every year for me to chop its head off and to ruin my mom, <laughs> my mom's <laughs> moment, then, then is it even Thanksgiving? No, absolutely not. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. it's tradition. You don't fuck with tradition. You just keep going. That's right. That's right. It's all about the tradition. It's all about the tradition. So, yeah. That's my favorite Thanksgiving thing and my final pick of the evening. Derek's ode to butter turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, turkey made of butter. <laughs> you... I chopped your head off. Now screams my mother. <laughs> you kind of sound like Peter Griffin. I was going for a Linda a Linda Bell vibe, but it didn't really work out. <laughs> I could I could kind of see it. They they all, they kind of have the same thing going on with them. But yeah, man, I totally agree. Totally agree with the butter turkey. That's uh, maybe that'll be something my family picks up this year. If there's one thing that I can part on all of our listeners and on you, Grimy, get the butter turkey. <laughs> So good. That clapping's messing my head up, man. I appreciate it. But I was was trying to think of the next line. I'm like... So that was our big Thanksgiving show. Man, Derek, I really had a lot of fun doing this one. I did, too. For something that we kind of struggled with coming up with ideas, I feel like we did pretty okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, sometimes the simpler, the better, and uh, I think we nailed it. Yeah, I mean, it's not every day that I get to talk about gabagool and chopping turkeys' heads off, so I'd call that a win. Right. So uh, we'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, uh, wherever you're celebrating it, and I would like to say um, stay tuned. There is going to be a lot of cool stuff over at the Dem Boys page. Um, I have a lot of articles written up that just aren't there yet, but they will be very soon. A lot of junk food stuff, a lot of uh, cool, nostalgic, Christmassy stuff, and I think you're going to enjoy it. How about you, Derek? Yeah, just keep your eyes peeled for all the Dem Boy stuff like Grimey said. I'm going to be uh, taking pictures or scans of this old Radio Shack ad that I was talking about so you all can see what I've been babbling and gushing about for you know, whatever it comes out to be, like 10 minutes on this show. I also have an old Warner Brothers store catalog, uh, Christmas catalog, from like the mid-90s, so I'm probably going to do the same thing there. But, yeah, aside from that, I just want to wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope uh, this year's a little bit better than last year because that was certainly weird, so I hope you all get to see everybody that you want to see or avoid everybody that you want to avoid. And uh, don't drink and drive. Don't be that asshole. Absolutely. But enjoy yourselves because it'll all be over in like an hour. That's right. (laughs) With that being said, I am Grimy from Retroplasm. And I am Derek from itsdemboys.com. And we would like to thank you for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.